Good morning, all you YouTube friends. Sorry I'm late. I was over here in plenty of time. Working. Morning. Proceeded to catch it. My finger on a nail. Blood just flying. Of course, got no band aids right now. Tried to staunch that. Then got over here and bless my heart. Good morning. Bless my heart, I started reading some things on my Facebook feed. I wanted to smack some folks. <sighs> but I didn't. Afternoon. If you kind of look there, we ain't going to Ephesians. I, I, a brother in Alabama sent me a voice text yesterday and got me to thinking on a couple of things. A couple of things I want to look at, but first we're going to sing Psalm 31. We're going to sing verses 9 through 16. Verses 9 through 16. Well, it looks like I cut myself twice and didn't know it. I got another one on my thumb. I think that stopped itself. That blood seems to be dry. Well, it was till I messed with it. Oh, Lord, have upon me mercy have. For trouble is on me. My eye, my belly, and my soul with grief consumed be. Because my life with grief is spent, my years with sighs and groans. My strength doth fail, and for my sin consumed are my bones. I was a scorn to all my foes and to my friends a fear, especially reproach to those that were my neighbors dear. When they me saw, they from me fled. Even so, I am forgot, as men are out of mind when dead. I'm like a broken pot. For slanders I of many heard, fears compassed me while they against me did consult, and plot to take my life away. But as for me, O Lord, my trust upon thee I did lay, and I to thee, thou art my God, did confidently say. My times are holy in thy hand. Do thou deliver me from the hands of that mine enemies and persecutors be. Thy countenance to shine do thou upon thy servant make. Give me salvation for thy great mercy's sake. We'll sing this um, to Arlington. Y'all know I never can start Arlington without looking at the music. I don't know why that is. I've sung that tune for so many years. Oh, Lord, upon me, mercy. 
mercy have, for trouble is on me. Mine eye, my belly, and my soul with grief consumed be. Because my life with grief is spent, my years with sighs and groans. My strength doth fail, and for my sin, consumed are my bones. I a scorn to all my foes and to my friends a fear and specially reproached of those that were my neighbors near when they me saw they from me fled, even so I am forgot, as men are out of mind when dead, I'm like a broken pot, for slanders I of many heard, fear compassed me while they against me did consult and plot to take my life away. But as for me, O Lord, my trust upon Thee I did lay, and I to Thee, Thou art my God, did confidently say, My times are holy, do thou deliver me from their hands that mine enemies and persecutors be? Thy countenance to shine do thou upon thy servant make unto me give salvation for thy great mercy's sake Daddy. Here we are. Oh my, excuse me. Isaiah 6. Might as well start with verse 1. It's a short chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. I got to tell this. I remember dear Sister Bellas, with of Elder Arnold Bellas, daughter of Elder William Beebe, granddaughter, therefore, of Gilbert Beebe. She was living with the berries. Talking one time. Didn't get to visit with her much. She was a very private woman. One of the times when I did, she was talking, talking about some preacher come to see her there in North Carolina. Now, y'all got to know a couple of things first. People, people in the north, in the old school churches, were a little more staid than they were in the south. They were also a little more studied in their discourses. They were less emotional, and they had their own set of traditions. There's a very famous editorial in the Signs of the Times by Elder Spangler. It's one of the first ones he ever did on the differences in the Baptist North and South. Differences in custom now, not in doctrine, in custom. In doctrine, they were the same pretty much. First thing she said about this preacher is he flopped himself down on the floor to pray. Or what he called praying. Her words, not mine. <laughs> Up north they stand to pray. Actually from the eastern shore of Maryland north. Ministers stood to pray. Those of you there down south know that South of there, ministers normally kneel to pray. She didn't think much of him flopping himself down on the floor. Oh, and he, evidently he prayed from the rivers to the ends of the earth. And when he got done, he read the text scripture, was going to comment on it for her. And it was Isaiah 6 1. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Sister Bella's with all of the I'd like to call it righteous indignation and 
that's kind of what it was. She could muster, said, And do you know what he said that was? Well, no, sister, what? A choo-choo train. I thought to myself, Lord, deliver her and me from such. That would call that a choo-choo train. Every time I read that, I think of her, and I think of that. And I think of how we have fallen from the days of Gilbert Beebe, William Beebe, and even Elder Arnold Bellis. I never heard Elder Bellis myself, just tapes with him on it. I enjoyed what he had to say. Read some of his writings in the Old Faith Contender. But anyway, you want to know something else about that first verse in Isaiah 6? We could read the rest of the chapter. I think that the train that filled the temple was a choo-choo train. That's how we've fallen. I don't mean necessarily you or me. I hope not me. I've got enough problems. But as a people... We've fallen. In John twelve thirty seven, it says, But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. They could not believe. Woo, mercy. Come here, Arminian. Come here, conditionalist. You want these unbelievers to be in glory? My goodness gracious. They couldn't believe. Why? Because that Isaiah said again, He, God, hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with heart and be converted and I should heal them. Now, if they're not healed, brethren, surely he hath borne our infirmities. If they're not healed, their infirmities were not borne by him. And this ain't talking about no natural disease or illness. It's not talking about anything like that, is it? Oh, no. These things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Who? Jesus. Who did Isaiah see high and lifted up, sitting on a throne, and his train filled the temple? And that glorious train was not a train like that one preacher thought it was. You know it and I know it. No, no. It was Jesus on the throne. And above it stood the seraphims. You know, you got all these people going to heaven and coming back so they could tell you about it. 
by selling you a DVD or a book to describe it. I don't recall one of them seeing Jesus on the throne. Do you? I don't recall a one of them with these seraphims above it. What did our Lord pray? Father, glorify thou me with the glory that I had with thee before the world was, and if this is not a representation of that glory, I don't know what is. And they see these, these people that go to heaven and come back to tell you about it. I mean, I'm so seraph, but man, they see these pretty angels. Kind of and androgynous. But pretty beautiful. Man, above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. Wait a minute. How do you know them seraphim that you saw so pretty? According to this, they cover their faces in the presence of Almighty God. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of ho is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Notice that. Give that one to all them folks that want to try to tell you there's such a thing as common grace. The earth's not full of his grace, the earth's full of his glory. Yet men want to erase the Creator from His creation. They seek not to retain God in their knowledge. All this happened. We had a big bang. I've said it before and I'll say it again if I live. When the Lord God created the heaven and the earth, there might have been a big bang. There might have been a little whimper. I don't know. I wasn't there. All I know is he did it. Out of nothing came something. Not by chance or happenstance but by the eternal will of Almighty God, the creator of all things, and it was to show forth his glory as creator. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, this is Isaiah. Notice something here as well. Isaiah's got this vision of God. Doesn't say he was carried to heaven, he saw. I believe the heavens were opened. And like who was it? Gehazi's eyes got opened to see that there was more that fought with them than fought against them. Was made, was enabled to see the armies of heaven. So Isaiah got things pulled back for a moment and he got to see. What did he cry? Woe is me, for I'm undone. You know, he didn't go dancing with Jesus. Well, that's because he's a man. Well, 
woe is me. Lord well, didn't take to show him the body parts around. Didn't show him the room where all the, the, the portals are, where your relatives and angels sing happy birthday to you on your birthday. Where your dead relatives can watch you. I, I'll tell you, brethren, if there ain't nothing more for me to do in glory than watch my living relatives here on this earth, most of whom I don't even really know, that ain't going to be much heaven to me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm gonna I will hope to be satisfied beyond measure to be in the presence of my Redeemer and praise Him throughout all of whatever's left for His great love. He died for me. Man, that's heaven enough. To be in the presence of Jesus, our elder brother. Oh, it wouldn't be heaven if Aunt Susie wasn't there. Yes, it would. If it wouldn't, you don't know what heaven is. And you're desiring something after the flesh, and you're not desiring something after the Spirit. But rather than run around and try to see things and try and uh, figure out what's going on, uh, look at all the different things. You know, he didn't go try to, Isaiah here, he didn't go try to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't look for Moses. He wasn't interested in any of that. He knew he was in the presence of Almighty God, and he says, Woe is me. Why? For I'm undone because... I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now, if we go back to John 12, and I don't think I need to turn there, y'all know what it says. That tells me that Jesus is the Lord of hosts. And I'm satisfied with that. I am. What happens next? Then one of the seraphims flew unto me having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. I'm just rereading this right quick. This is our first mention of an altar, isn't it? Also the first mention of anything burning on an altar. I might be totally wrong here, and if I am, please forgive me, but because there's coals on it, I believe this is the altar of incense where the prayers of the saints are offered up. A sweet savor in the nostrils of the Lord of hosts. He took a coal from off that altar. Fire purifies, doesn't it? What did he do with it? He laid it upon my mouth. Well, 
me one of them seraphims. Couldn't touch that coal without tongs. Laid it on Isaiah's mouth. And said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. The purified fire of God. Off the altar of incense. You hear, that, that, that was a prayer of Isaiah. We think of prayers as asking for something. Sometimes we think of praise. Who did Isaiah say this to? Woe is me, I'm undone. Oh, my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts, the King. Come here, dispensationalist. Jesus was king in eternity past. Jesus was king in, during the time of the Old Testament. Now, you trying to tell us that, yes, he, he came in the form of a servant. The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. He who was God's equal. Subordinated himself. And yet we're waiting for the kingdom. When he sat down on that throne after his ascension, after his resurrection, after his teaching his disciples, That crown is on his head, never to leave it again. He is the king. Just as he was king then. Oh, Jesus is waiting for to get his kingdom till the millennium comes, baloney. I'm going to say this plainly because I mean it. If Jesus is not king now, I have no hope. If Jesus is not king now, right now, I have no hope. Because as far as I can see from the word, that means his sacrifice was not acceptable unto God. He was not accepted. Therefore, his death meant nothing. I know not a one of us believes that. Even though there are many and does believe it, he won't say it. He pays lip service to the death of Christ. Excuse me for burping, brethren. I had a strange breakfast, I'm sure, to some of you. Huevos y chorizo Con queso y cheddar. Three eggs with three, uh, tres huevos con chorizo. Three eggs with Mexican sausage. And 
con tres quesos, three different cheeses, y chile. And chili on top of the whole blessed thing. Making me burp a little bit still. Now look here. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. I heard the voice of Yahweh. Said, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? I ain't going to dwell on that. The I and the us. I'll let y'all think about that. Morning. Then said I, Here I here, I, send me. He couldn't have said that unless the coal from the altar had touched his lips. He was still been wallowing in despair, being despondent. He says, go. All right, go. Think Isaiah could have said, wait just a minute now, I'm thinking this over, maybe I don't want, no, a command already came, go. And tell the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of the people fat, make their ears heavy, shut their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. And said, I, Lord, how long? He answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. In other words, till they carried away in captivity. Until my judgment comes upon them. Now, let's look for just a minute in the book of Zephaniah. Third chapter. Let's begin verse 8. Excuse me. Goodness, if I'm not burping, I'm a yawning. <laughs> Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. Now, Mr. Arminian, listen again. Shouldn't the Lord have said, get you to doing my work on this earth? You got things to do, boy. Hurry up about it. No. Wait ye upon me until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my what? Well, my decision is if they'll let me, I'll assemble the kingdoms. My determination is to gather the nations. Do you think there's any remote possibility that one of them nations might decide not to get gathered?
Yes, I know, brother, and I'm kind of being foolish. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms so that I can give them a good dose of gospel from Benny Hinn. Kenneth Copeland. Franklin Graham. No. So that I can give him a chance. No. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even my fear, all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. You realize you go speaking a language you, you never learned. This ain't talking about talking in tongues. This is talking about the pure language of Zion. Why? Why will I, how will they get it? I'll turn it to them. They won't have to go find a grammar book. They won't need a dictionary or a thesaurus. No. I'll turn it to them. And it'll be pure. You know why it's a pure language? Because God's pure. That's why. I see this as the antithesis of Genesis where he confounded the languages at Babylon. He took the nations of the earth. They were all gathered together there at Babylon. They're going to build them a tie to reach heaven. And what did the Lord do? Confuse their languages. Now, this is special. This is talking about in his kingdom. I'll turn to the people of pure language. That they may all, not that they might all, but that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. To serve him with one consent. See, everyone who knows this language knows where it comes from. They know they didn't get it in school. They didn't go to seminary to learn it. It didn't come to them by nature, by study. A lot of these Calvinists, they think you can study this language and learn it. You can get it in your mind. And it better be pure, too, by golly. I mean, we're not talking. You best, you best pronounce that shibboleth right. Let me tell you something. That pure language confounds the religions of the world. Because this pure language is the language of grace. This pure language is the language that gives all honor, glory, and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done. This pure language Let's everybody know that 
that Jesus alone is the Savior of sinners. It's not Jesus and you. I remember an old country gospel song. The Chuck Wagon Gang. Man, I hadn't thought of the Chuck Wagon Gang in ages. On the Jericho Road, there's room for just two. No more, no less, just Jesus and you. Why the wise and the prudent can't understand that language? They think you're babbling. Isn't that what they said about Paul one time? Let's hear what this babbler has to say. Man, I got to get that smaller concordance in here and put this one out there. Am I thinking correctly? Do I have the right thing on my mind? Acts 17, 18. Acts 17, 18. Yeah, that's when he's in Athens. Paul waited for him in Athens. Certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Yeah, it's just a babble to them. Because the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews hear the babbling of the child of God. And it's stumbling blocking to them. So they won't hear Jesus. And you don't have to be a natural Jew or even a practicer of Judaism to be one of these Jews. It's anyone. Listen to me now. I believe that spiritually speaking, it's anyone who wants something other than Jesus. Who knows they can't save themselves. But anything but Jesus. We'll, we got the law. We've got this. We've got that. No, no, no. You ain't got nothing. You just think you do. I'll turn to the people of pure language that they may call upon me. It's a language of holy submission. It's a language of reverence. It's a language of knowing that you Or nothing but he is everything down just a little further I see our time is rapidly waning. The rim, uh, this verse 13, 
the remnant of Israel. There you go. There's a remnant. Hairstyle, the remnant of Israel. You want to make a church? You think there's something in there? Got to be good because, man, they got 40,000 members. I'd rather have a micro church than a mega church. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you rather be with five or six people who loved the Lord Jesus Christ and didn't want to hear a self help uh, lecture? Well, that's what they want, isn't it? Take their casual references to Jesus and God out of their books. It's in the other secular self-help book. Here's what you do. I can't. Oh, my. No, no, no. A thousand times no. Yes, brother. Better be on the house top alone. Than in that mess. I think I told this before. I'm going to tell it again. Might have been on a Zoom meeting rather than on here. Many, many years ago, right after I joined the conditionalist, I mean, I hadn't even dried off good. Pastor said, Say, you want to go with me this weekend? Fifth Sunday. Where? Russellville, Arkansas. About 80 miles from home. Well, yeah, I can take off. Why? What's going on? Having a conference on evangelism. Conference on evangelism. This is a primitive Baptist church, supposedly. What it was is there was a bunch of us that just come out of the Missionary Baptist or others, Arminianism. And a couple of these guys wanted to learn what all we'd been doing so they could put a Calvinistic whitewash on it and do the same thing. They had to be doing. They had to be evangelizing. They had to be doing all these things to, to, uh, to uh, reach their community for Christ. Preaching the gospel wasn't good enough. There was a couple there after lunch when we was having an informal discussion before the afternoon sermon. They started in talking. About this, they're asking all kind of questions of us newcomers. The woman in the couple got off, got up, looked at her husband. Said, "I think we've been in this before," and they left. We come to find out that they had been among the progressive primitive Baptist 
before they came to the old line. They didn't know they was joining the liberal wing of the old line that became that has now embraced missionism and all sorts of things. But there they were. They got up and left. And I don't blame them. It was good for me to have been there. So I could see that all was not as I thought it was among these people. How did I get off on that talking about the remnant of Israel? They shall not do iniquity. I can hear you saying now, that's not me. Yes, it is. Nor speak lies. I can hear you saying, that's not me. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. I can hear you say it now. That's not me. But it is. If you're part of this remnant... Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he's born of God. I ain't talking about your flesh. That's talking about what's born of the Spirit. And that's what separates the remnant of Israel from the big Israel. One's been born twice. The other's been born once. The remnant have a new man in them created in righteousness, true holiness. See what he's getting at there? The remnant of Israel has a nation of Israel. But there's that remnant. We could say it today. There's Christianity or Christendom. And there's the remnant. And I'm afraid most of what passes for Christianity is not part of the remnant of Israel. The true Israel of God. They don't speak lies because they can't. <laughs> you undone too, are you? We all undone if that's the case. Brethren, I think that's it. I think I've said enough. I think that's enough.
Hope the Lord gives you some food for thought and meditation on that. You're welcome. Now listen. I'm going to read the, I'm going to read that text out of the Septuagint, Brother Wayne. You want to know about how I've done this six five? And I said, Oh, I am miserable, for I am vexed for being a man and having unclean lips in the in midst of a people having unclean lips. I live in. And the king, the Lord of hosts. I beheld with my eyes. Woo! Mercy sakes alive. That'll do the preacher. He's vexed. All right, brother. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, any other questions, comments, etc. Before we get off here? I like Miss Bullet Vex. Yes, exactly. I thought the same thing. Miserable and vexed. Well, brethren, if that's it, I'm going to get off here. Time for some weeding. I understand that. i tell you what I'm getting ready to do, Lord willing. Getting ready to dig up part of the backyard. Yes, dig it. I'm going to rake it. I'm going to dig some more. Hmm. 
When I'm done, I'm going to lay down some of that fabric. I'm going to put some soil in it. Gonna plant me a bunch of lettuce. Little broccoli. Did yeah, just broadcast. Cover it up, mulch it over. What comes up is what the Lord wills. But you know what? Next year, Lord willing, it'll be prepared ground. I've tried to plant strawberries three times and they ain't took yet. I've tried from seeds, from plants, I've tried everything. The Lord has not blessed strawberries. But I got wild strawberries all over that yard. All over this backyard. I don't understand. Understand, Brother Wayne, I got to I gotta redo this bathroom. Not really remodel it, just can't find anybody that wants to put a roof on just this little part. The house is has a wonderful roof on it, but the kitchen and the bathroom were added on later. They've got an almost flat roof, and they've put roll roofing on it, and it's come off, and it's leaking like a sieve now. And so I've got to have that done before I can even think about remodeling the bathroom, either replastering it or put up the other. Put up some kind of green board, sheetrock, whatever, I don't know. But I've got to get the roof fixed before I can do that. I'm not getting a new hot water heater till that's done. And I don't know whether to get instant on or a tank. Do I have hot water? Yeah. But I just need a new tank. It's leaking. Not enough to make my, um, not enough to make my electric bill go up. Electric. <laughs> not enough to make my water bill go up. I'm still paying the minimum. I know it would. If I thought I could get away with it, I'd put one out there in the backyard.
All right, man, well, enough of that though. Outhouse though. <laughs> Let's bow together. Most gracious Heavenly Father, look down upon us and keep us safe. Keep us in peace. Keep us ever mindful of thy greatness and thy glory. Let us see Jesus lifted up high on the throne. Lord of hosts. Our God. As well as our Savior. Be with all thy remnant. Guide them into all truth. Bring us together again if it be thy will. For it's in his holy name we ask. Amen. All right, brethren, Lord willing, we'll be in Ezekiel, uh, Ephesians tomorrow. We'll be somewhere, if the Lord wills, that we be together. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right, I hope the Lord will richly bless you, and I thank you for being here, and I thank you for your attention. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>